So ladies and gentlemen, as David explained, I am Arte Heinla. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Starship Technologies. And uh, I had a previous life uh, where I was uh, part of the founding team of Skype. Uh, and uh, uh, yes, as David explained, I come from Estonia, where Starship engineering is. I hope you all love my accent. Uh, and uh, I am here also together with two of my colleagues, uh, COO Alan Martinson and CCO Keith Cornell. And uh, we are about to present a company that is doing to delivery what Skype did to telecoms. We are going to radically disrupt delivery. We came out of stealth three weeks ago, and the world took notice. Now, let's think about the problem in more general terms. The UK is the European leader in e-commerce. But still, e-commerce amounts to only about 15% of total retail volume in the UK. And in the rest of Europe, it's even lower. It's half of that. It's 8%. Now, when we look at groceries, the figures get even smaller. Only 5% of grocery shopping in the UK is done online. And in the rest of Europe, that's 1%, close to 1%. So, here we see a sample of what kind of goods enter the doorstep of an average British household in, let's say, like half a week. You can see there's a lot of grocery bags. There is some other you know, personal shopping bags. And there is, there is one or two online shopping parcels. Now, let us think, how do those things actually get to that doorstep? So a lot of it is personal shopping. So a typical British household uh, spends about one hour per week for personal shopping trips. That's a huge waste of time. Let's quantify this time somehow. How much time is worth? Let's say it's 10 pounds per hour. So if we multiply those together, we see it's 300 million pounds of wasted human time lying on this floor, and this 300 million is just for one day. So let's think about the online shopping parcels here. The transport of those parcels is actually very wasteful as well. To deliver this small parcel, and even, even actually this parcel, there is this big van stopping, starting, accelerating, burning fuel. And then there is the driver who is stopping, you know, getting on and off and, uh, and uh, knocking on doors. And the driver spends typically 5 to 15 minutes for each delivery. And they're not actually particularly enjoying that time. It's not a very enjoyable job, really. Now, their executives are actually not enjoying it either. Everybody in the delivery industry actually hates the last mile. The first miles are more efficient, but the last mile is not. It takes about three to seven pounds to deliver one parcel, the last mile part of it. And it is really, really difficult to get it down. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is clear that it is not possible to achieve a breakthrough in e-commerce without the corresponding breakthrough in last mile delivery. And that, in turn, is not possible to do without eliminating the high human cost and the expensive heavy vehicle from the last mile equation. Now, there have been quite a few attempts to, uh, to change that equation and, and to do some of that. And there are going to be other presentations here talking about, about uh, a lot of different approaches. So, some say uh, that the answer is crowdsource delivery. Crowdsource delivery is essentially tapping into a lower cost labor pool made possible by the mobile technologies. This can help with the economics. It improves the economics a little bit, but it's still not an order of magnitude. It's not a revolution that we are looking for. Some say the answers are click and collect and postal lockers. Now, this is certainly much more efficient from a business standpoint, 
but the last mile delivery in this case is actually still done by the people, by the, the residents of the household. And they actually do not like it, obviously. The majority prefers home delivery. Now then, some people are saying the answers lie in you know, flying objects, the flying drones. While I believe that drones will have their place, there are still lots of unanswered questions around dr drones. It's the safety. It's the regulatory barriers. It's the energy efficiency. And it's also the public perception. People actually do not like you know, flying machines flying over their backyards with you know, other people's groceries you know, dangling there you know, over the heads of their, their children playing in the backyard. So Starship, the Starship solution to the last mile problem is small land-based local delivery robots. And I invite you here to speak to, about that, our COO, Alan Martinson. Hello, everybody. So I am from Estonia as well, so please excuse my accent as well. I'm here today to present to you the first time in the UK on a public stage Starship robot. And please welcome our little friend here. Please come. Good robot, thank you. So as you, as you can see, it's a small vehicle. So let me tell you, tell you a few words about that. So first of all, the design philosophy of Starship robot is revolving around putting the wheels to a parcel. So we are not thinking in terms of like using two-ton automatic self-driving car to deliver, let's say, one kilo of something. So we think about putting the vehicle around it and make it as small as possible uh, to carry those back. So basically, this vehicle weighs around 20 pounds. So it's uh, 40 pounds fully loaded. And it can carry an equivalent of roughly two, two shopping bags. So let's put some in here. So that's what's happening on, on delivery company side. So they just close the lead. It locks. And the robot starts rolling. As you may have noticed, it rolls on pedestrian speeds. So roughly speaking, four miles per hour. So we have actually software limited the speed to four miles per hour. It's a pedestrian speed because it needs to merge with pedestrian traffic. It needs to blend in with pedestrians. So, and it is moving on pavements. So it's not designed to move on streets. So it walks next to me. So it's a friendly vehicle. So it can actually stop when I stop in front of it. So it detects obstacles, it detects other pedestrians, and it can adjust speed. It can stop if needed, it can do a detour. So, and it's extremely smart. Actually, this vehicle knows its location with two inch precision. So it's much, much more precise than just measuring precision with GPS. So we have our patent pending technologies doing that. So I will not reveal the secret. So, but it knows where it is. It was very, very high precision. So, in, and it can navigate the uh, pavement. Now it's takes, a, because it uh, drives at pedestrian speeds, and it's optimized for roughly two to three mile radius, and rather maybe one to two mile radius and, of deliveries. But that's where most of the deliveries are actually happening. And it takes around 15, 20, 30 minutes max to reach the destination. So now, once it has arrived to my doorsteps at my home, I get a notification on my mobile phone. So I push a button, and I can open the lead. I take my groceries out. Here it goes. So it's extremely safe. So nobody else can actually open the lead besides me. And because this vehicle is extremely lightweight, and because it travels at very low speed, it's also the safest technology, the safest self-driving technology you can actually find anywhere else. It's also very practical. So we have designed this vehicle not to drive autonomously 100% of the time. It's only 99% of the time. So it only drives when it's in less complicated situations. 
And in 1% of more complicated situations where it needs to basically make a decision which may be difficult for a robot to decide, it calls home, it calls an operator who can actually see the word around it through nine cameras which are installed here. And the operator somewhere can help the robot further on. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Starship. And I'm now passing the word over to Keith, our chief commercial officer, and he will tell how we will make money with that and how you can make money with that. Thank you. Thanks, Alan. So Starship technology is not just about this cute robot. It's meant to be a complete last mile solution. So what happens is delivery companies or e-commerce companies, package delivery companies, grocers, local businesses, drop off at our hub. Our hubs are also automated, so they're robotic inside to make sure that they load and charge our robots without any human intervention. You then, as a consumer, can call up for that delivery on demand. It comes to you when you request that delivery. It has an app that shows you where it is, and it is delivered directly to you. The economics are, we're looking at a service area, as Alan alluded to, of about a one to two mile radius, and we will deliver in about 15 to 20 minutes during the, in that radius. Our goal here, by reducing and eliminating the human side, is to get our cost structure down to something like a pound per delivery. That's the goal that we want to drive to, to get this kind of change into, into the system. We allude to what we call the broadband for things. If you think about internet being on demand, being safe, secure, you're able to get it when you want. What we want to do is change from this scenario of packages to where the packages are coming to you as if they were coming down the internet. What we want to do is take businesses and get that on-demand, change the last mile cost structure so that businesses are able to get packages to consumers. And on the consumer side, what we're looking for is on-demand delivery. You're able to call it up, free e-commerce, and you're able to see exactly where your package is as it's being brought to you. Starship is going to launch in the UK in the second quarter of 2016 and will be commercial in 2017. And we look forward to welcoming you on our journey to the future. Thank you very much. I want to ask a question or two. May I ask Artie. my colleagues? Yes. Come here. I can see on a private estate there being no problem, but the public highways are full of the public. And you can't always predict how the public is going to behave. And if I have a $500 iPad in there, how do I know that the public isn't going to get to it before I do? First, uh, the primary use case for this is not actually delivering uh, for, uh, you know, $500 iPads. And we are also not going to do deliveries for Tiffany's. Uh, but uh, in general, uh, you know, it is not actually very easy to steal anything uh, from it. Uh, it is locked. It is not easy to open that without any special tools. Uh, there's also you know, nine cameras. So smile, you're on camera. Uh, we know the location. Uh, the robot is not, not uh, so lightweight that it's easy to you know, carry away. And uh, <clears throat> since we know the location of that, then obviously the people who would ever do that, you know, they will be prosecuted. We will we'll catch those people. There's a company called Uber that's had little local difficulties because they're existing taxi drivers. Are you going to have huge legal fights with local people called postmen and postwomen? Not sure about postmen and postwomen, <clears throat> but, uh, but uh, in general, we have certainly find, found that uh, people are very positive towards those robots. They are friendly robots. But in, in specific <coughs> about the regulatory regime, do you need to get permission to have these on the streets? In the UK, the situation is such that uh, the local government uh, does need to give permission for those things to be accepted on the payment. Uh, but we have talked to many of them in the UK, and they all love it. Uh, because the thing is, uh, robots like this, they reduce congestion. They reduce pollution. They allow uh, people to live longer lives you know, independently at home, for instance. So in terms of political agenda, 
uh, there are a lot of things to love about it. What happens when he gets so smart he becomes more powerful than us and tries to take over? <laughs> Do you have an ethics committee? Uh, <clears throat> not yet, and uh, in, the, in the short run we are not planning to have one, uh, because one of the key uh, technical uh, innovations about this robot is that we are, we are doing uh, the self-driving robot uh, in a simplified way, in that a number of technological choices we have done here uh, are aimed at uh, simplifying the technology and being able to get those things to the market not in you know, five or ten years. And, you know, some of the, the other you know, innovative uh, robotic deliver delivery solutions, but get it you know, like next year, the year after that, and so forth. So this is relatively simple technology. It's not going to, it's not going to steal your job, for sure. <laughs> it might do. Um, RT and team, thank Next you very much later. for coming over. And fantastic name for a startup, Starship Technologies. Um, and thank you for all you've done, too. Thank you. Thank you.